That's a shark. That's a shark. Hi, I'm Paolo, and I cover untranslated Japanese hobby news. And today we're looking at the latest Yu-Gi-Oh! news to show off my feed, a new set of card teasers. Lately they've been doing teasers for the soon to release Duelist Pack, Duelists of the Abyss, which focuses on water-based duelists, and they've been really holding out with my boy Nash outside of some reprints and one new card. But finally, that's a shark. And what a shark. This thing is very clearly Abyss Splash inspired. Just look at the spikes with the yellow and the orbs. So this might go even further than what I was expecting. To be honest, my anticipation was that it would rely on reprints such as Lantern Shark and Buzzsaw Shark, which are already common things to use in Duel Links. But we might even get sharks that make rank three to five water disease summons even easier. So let's take a look. So as you see, this is V Jump News. This is the Duelist pack in question. You can see that with Nash in the front. Got two monsters here, actually. This is very clearly an Xyz monster and a Chaos Xyz monster. We've seen the monster in the back already, and it might be detailed here today. And if so, I'll go through it. But what new water cards do we have here? Five cards. Okay, 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 okay. It's got, oh, it's got other cards below. Actually, oh, oh this is actually really good. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got two sharks, two spells, and trap. And this is all very important because this thing is called a Bish Shark. Exactly what I was expected. It looks like a bit splash. Five star shark. 1200, 700. Doesn't really even pack the wallop that even Lantern Shark can claim to have. So, fish type monster effect. First effect of the card of this card name can only be used once per turn. First effect. If the monsters on your field are nothing but water type monsters, you could special summon this card from your hand and then take a level three to four fish type monster other than a bit shark from your deck and add it to your hand. This turn, you can only special summon water type monsters and damage inflicted to your opponent in battle inflicted with one of your numbers monsters doubles for once that turn. Jesus! Jesus! This is just the first effect! Okay, it was already ridiculous to line up. Even just free Xyz summons of water type monsters just with Buzzsaw Shark. But this thing's level 5, so it just makes summoning Abyss Splash even easier and can take a level 4 or 5 from your deck. So as long as it's not Abyss Shark, you can just take another level 5 one immediately and put it on the field. And then you get the bonus of a numbers monster doing double damage that turn on your opponent's monster once for free. So it just applies Abyss Splash effect in this card itself but for number monsters that aren't even abyss splash and if you wanted to you could put it on top of abyss splash this also could be said to cover up for problems that people have had with abyss splash in the ocg ever since it was released and that's that it's slightly weaker than in the show because the card as opposed to in the show is kind of nerfed to do half damage the turn it activates its effect, so it's not as powerful. Whereas this gets rid of that limitation. They have updated the game to say that that limitation is no longer needed, so Abyss Splash can be done entirely accurate to the show as long as you use this card, Abyss Shark. Second effect. When this card is used for the Xyz summon of a numbers monster, this card's level can also be treated as three or four. Very good. Also basically the same as Lantern Shark and Buzzsaw Shark, but the crucial difference is not of a water type Xyz monster, but any numbers monster. So this gives you far more permission to use any numbers monsters you want in your shark deck. That's cool. That's a cool way of doing that. I am definitely already down for this. This might be a worthy substitution for Lantern Shark and Buzzsaw Shark, but I still hope those get reprinted, especially because Eternity Code, the set they are released in, is quite hard to get now. <laughs> Card number two, we have Crystal Shark. This is clearly based on Nash's sister, since she has crystal type cards, and is also level five, so this would be another target. It looks a lot like Gazer Shark, with the face here, but then all the pointy parts of a crystal card. Once again, level five, fish, 11, eight, this card's first effect can only be used once per turn, similar to Abyss Shark. Effect number one. If this card exists in the hand or in the graveyard, you can target one water type monster on the field and activate this effect. Special summon this card and make the attack of the targeted monster half. This card, special summoned by this effect, is banished when it is removed from the field. After the activation of this effect, until the end of the turn, you cannot special summon anything from the extra deck except Xyz monsters. Okay, that's an interesting limitation. Also an interesting way this is focused because this does make it easier to special summon this card if you already have another card on the field. 
but it doesn't specify that the water monster has to be on your side of the field, just that it be on the field. So, corner case scenario, if your opponent has a water type monster on the field, you could halve the attack of that monster to special summon this card. And also, this is from the graveyard too, so if you end up using this card as a cost for something, I guess, you would still be able to take advantage of this effect. If you'd use it from the hand, when it leaves the field, it would be banished, so it wouldn't go to the graveyard, so this implies a situation where it's already in the graveyard. Interesting, interesting, I think maybe some parts of this will be made more clear later, but at least it is certainly worthy to be put in this deck. Second effect, when this card is used for the Xyz summon of a numbers monster, this card's level can be treated also as 3 or 4. Great, so designed in partnership with the Abyss Shark, like Buzzsaw Shark and Lantern Shark are designed together for similar ways. So that makes that makes sense. That's that's good. Cool, cool, cool. Next, it's very interesting that we have uh, support cards, and I believe these might actually be yes recreations of things that were in the show. Because first of all, we have Barion's Chaos Draw. Is this not literally a thing he did in the show? First, and by the looks of it, only effect of this normal magic card. Ah, oh, it's a similar thing to the seventh one. If you draw this card in your draw phase and continue to show it publicly to your opponent. When it comes around to main phase one, you can select from one of the below effects and apply it. Okay, so the two options are send one sevens normal magic card from your deck to the graveyard and you can activate this effect. This effect is treated as the same as the effect of that card at activation. Cool, cool, cool. I'm not actually sure what a sevens card is, so that's interesting. Might have to look that up in a sec if it's not referring to other cards in this set. The second effect is special summon up to two monsters from your deck with their effects negated. So those two monsters, Xyz summon one numbers Xyz monster from your extra deck using all monsters on your own field as materials. So you just get two guys, and if you have even more guys than that, you can take them all and make an Xyz monster that's applicable to those guys. So that's a good way to get even more materials onto one Xyz monster. Very good, very good. Right, this is it. This is one of the cards in question. Seven's Ascension. Very understandable picture here. It's Shark Knight with Dark Knight. This card name's first and second effects can each only be used once per turn. First effect. Select one of the below cards from your deck and either add it to your hand or place it on the top of your deck. Good. Good. There was one Xyz monster in Eternity Code that was designed to make it easier to place Rank Up Magic, the seventh one, on top of your deck because if you don't draw it naturally, then you can't activate its effect. So placing the top of your deck is very important. This also has a support effect like that, so that's very good. That increases consistency by quite a bit. So you may choose a magic or trap card other than Seven's Ascension, a Baryon's magic or trap card, so including Baryon's Chaos Draw, and most likely Baryon Forces. But also, you can also choose to select a Quick Play Rank Up Magic spell card. Just any one of them. But, of course, the seventh one is the one that is most fixed by this effect. Second effect, ladies and gentlemen. If a monster special summoned from the extra deck exists on your opponent's side of the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one rank up magic spell card from your hand to the graveyard and activate this effect. This card's effect becomes that magic card's effect at the time of activation. Now, you might not understand why this is important, but just as I said with the seventh one, just as I was saying with the seventh one, if seventh one starts off in your draw hand, you cannot activate it normally because you need to use it by holding it in your hand publicly from the time you draw it in your draw phase. So the fact that this card exists means that there is no dead weight hand the seventh one because you could just send it to the graveyard with this effect and then use the effect of the seventh one. Good, 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 good. Absolutely very good support. Next we have Eternal Sevens. Once again, another good picture of Shark Knight with Dark Knight. Continuous Trap Card. A card of this name's first effect can only be used once per turn. First effect, and by looks of it only effect, target one numbers Xyz monster on your side of the field that's number 101 to number 107, or an Xyz monster that is currently using one of those cards as an Xyz material, and you can select from one of the below effects and apply them. First option, select one monster on your opponent's side of the field with attack lower than the target monster's attack, and until the end of the turn, negate that monster's effect. Second option, detach all Xyz materials from the targeted monster. After that, 
select one numbers monster from your graveyard and special summon it. Good. Good, good, good. So the options are here is if you have an over 100 numbers monster, or a chaos over 100 numbers monster, or something that would be using it as a material. You could either make a monster that would usually be destroyed in battle by your targeted card, have no effect to defend themselves from that happening. So, say for example if you're going up against Hope, number 39 Utopia, you could get rid of its attack negation effect. The second option is that you could choose to get rid of your Xyz materials to special summon a number monster from your graveyard. What this isn't making super clear just from reading it is the important factor that that means you could remove one of the over 100 number monsters from the card that's currently using it as a material, and by putting it in the graveyard with this effect, then immediately special summon it. That's why we have Shark Knight next to Dark Knight here, because if Dark Knight had Shark Knight used as a material on it, you could send that to the graveyard and then immediately special summon it to your side of the field. Good. Good, good, good. All interesting that's making a new archetype of sevens cards. Cool, cool, cool. I'll look up in a moment just to make sure there aren't any others hiding in the winds. Oh, and here we have the reprints. Here it is, guys. Here it is. I'm going to do them one by one. Of course, we have number 101, Shark Knight. That's good. I have it in English, but I was hoping to get it in Japanese too, so I'm glad it's here as a reprint. That's very generous and also technically very obvious. Um, it is technically, as people will know, quite a widely used Xyz monster because it is a rank 4 monster that just takes two level 4 monsters and has very interesting removal in absorbing one of your opponent's monsters as an Xyz material. Good, good, good. And we also have something that I was hoping to get somewhere else by the time this pack comes out. Silent Angler, of course, a card that Nash did use near the end of the series. He used a certain set of silent fish monsters, and this is a rare, not a shark, it is a angler. Used this a lot in Duel Links. For those people who don't remember what it is, if you have a water type monster on your side of the field, you could special summon this card from the hand. The turn you special summon this monster, you cannot special summon monsters from your hand. So it's a bit limiting that second part from what we've read of the new effects, but that's still going to be a reliable Xyz summon for a rank four. So other than that, we also have Xyz Remora. This is a interesting choice right here. Um, you also get Dark Knight here because Dark Knight. Xyz Remora is a very specific effect. What it does is it allows you to remove two Xyz materials on your side of the field and special summon it from the hand. And then you can target two level four fish type monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. What this is supposed to do is you would basically, you would Xyz summon any water type Xyz monster that takes two materials and then use this to get rid of those materials, special summon this, special summon those materials from the grave and then by having three level four fish type monsters on your side of the field, immediately Xyz summon into Shark Drake, which is very good. I'm surprised that they reprinted this in this. Are they going to reprint Shark Drake? Is that what this means? I have one copy of this in English, and once again, this is an old enough card that I would worry about how I would get one in Japanese now that I'm collecting Japanese cards, but cool, cool, cool. Of course, we have Dark Knight, a card I'm glad to see here because I always wanted it and never had it in English. Very interesting effects, including being revived as long as it died with an Xyz material on it, and when it revives onto the field, you regenerate health up to its attack. Good, good, good. So what else we have here is, of course, we have... Very interesting. We don't have Black Ray Lancer yet, by the looks of it. We do have Full Armored Black Ray Lancer and Rank Up Magic, the seventh one. To be fair, the seventh one is also a sevens by how the Japanese is written here. So that also counts the sevens card and as a rum card. But as you know, this just allows you to immediately special summon a Chaos Over 100 card for free. Full Armored Black Ray Lancer is a bit different. You can either Xyz summon it using three level four water monsters, or what's usually done is you'd play Bahamut Shark, a shark that's already been revealed to be reprinted in this set, by the way. Use its effect to special summon a water Xyz monster from your extra deck with no materials on it, and this card could special summon on top of a card with no materials. So for a flavor deck in Duel Links, what I do is I select the flying carrier thing that was Shark's first Xyz monster, and then just play it on top of that. And we also have Quick Chaos, which he did indeed use. The difference between this and other Chaos cards is quite simply that it has no bonus effects applied to it, unlike Baryon's Force. It just turns a numbers monster into a Chaos numbers monster, and 
the advantage, of course, that quick, it is a quick play spell. So, I am very excited for this. I made that last quite a long time, but those are good things. This might not be a reveal of everything because it still doesn't have the cover monster here, so there could be more here, but maybe we shouldn't expect too much more. It does have quite generous reprints, but at the same time, I would still like to see Lantern Shark, Buzzsaw Shark, and this doesn't list the ones that we are already aware of, like Bahamut Shark that got shown on Twitter. So, we are still waiting for the future for a teaser that will hopefully cover the cover monster as well, if they're not just going to leave that for the date, because this is going to release on the 20th of this month. So, I'm quite excited, and also a bit disappointed in myself for looking up these spoilers, because I almost wanted to wait for release, and I've talked about these cards to quite a bit of a degree, so my usual long unboxing videos might be a bit of repetition when it finally comes out, but we will see. Thank you for watching.